Hello, hello. Hey. <laughs> Good afternoon. It's uh, Midday Ministry. Wednesday, you get Pastor Kimo. Yep, we're back. And Natalie, we're back. Here we are. How are you guys doing out there? We got a few of you coming on. Hi, Barry. Hi, Barry. And Lynn. And what? who do you have on your I have Jaden Frampton, of course. Yay. Hey, Jaden, how Hi, are you? Hi, Jaden. And Lynn Dubois. Uh-huh. That's a French, French name. Does the French say Dubois? <laughs> Dubois. Not Boise. <laughs> That's right. How are you all doing? We are so excited that you're here with us. We have a, a special topic here, an inner healing and deliverance for the day. And uh, we're just excited to be part of Midday Ministry. We, we're so excited to be part of Revive Church Yes. Mm, this it's, season. It's hard not to be excited right now. <laughs> I hope you have heard, but Revive Church is uh, going to be relocating into our own building. We yes. got a new building. We got a building. We got a building. We got a building. <laughs> <laughs> we got a building. It will be uh, announced even more, but it is official. We are going to move in the next few months, probably. Yeah. I hope it's official because we started demo work already. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wasting uh, no time. <laughs> wasting no time. Yes. Work is being done. Preparations are being done so that we can uh, move the church as soon as possible. It will be right by I-95. Yay. Yay. So look up the um, website and there's announcements there. The Facebook page, Revive Church, you will... See, there's a video of the new building if yeah. you're interested in looking at it, okay? So here we are, our subject hey. again. It's always that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Inner healing and deliverance. That's uh, what we are, um, and that's who we are, and that's what God has done with us. So we're here to share with you um, on a couple of thoughts, but I want to pray first and welcome maybe a few more people, Great. all right? Jan's up. Hey, Jan. Hey, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you want to pray? No, you pray. Oh, I pray. I was, you already put me in the secondary mode of praying, so you... Okay, I got it. Let her rip, baby. All right. Father, I thank you for this opportune time, for this season in our life where we are just seeing you move and take ground, where you're releasing your people to run with you, where you're releasing your church bodies, the different church bodies around us, Lord, to take new territory and to uh, advance the kingdom. And Lord, I thank you that today there are people that are going to tune to this midday ministry session. They are going to listen. They are going to hear with their ears and their hearts, and they are going to receive something from you, Holy Spirit. So Lord, would you be at work as we speak today? As people here, let them heed what you're saying to them and minister to their hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I decided... You did. The subject today would be on the Father heart of God that we see manifesting in our sessions when we pray with people and they sit down with us. And especially what I have been noticing lately is an increase of the Father heart of God being completely infused into people's hearts. And um, that has been tremendous. Mm. That has been very transformative, very much healing, and very much uh, transformative at the core of people's being. Yeah. Uh, so I, that's my subject today. Awesome, awesome. So important. I mean, we get our identity from our Father. And ultimately, we have earthly fathers, but it's the Father that we want our identity. We want to know who we are. We want to know where we've come from, and we want to know where we're going. And that's only answered and found in knowing the Father. Man, that is the question of all, I would say, children, teenager. I recall myself as a teenager wondering, who am I? Where do I come from? What am I supposed to be? You know, these questions, and actually, we see in our inner healing sessions, we see the Holy Spirit speaking to the hearts of people and infusing into their hearts who they are, who they are supposed to be, what they're supposed to do, and just really infusing identity and belonging in their hearts. So, As only um, a father can. 
that's why I think it's a tremendous subject. Um, I want to read to you this scripture from uh, John chapter 20. And that is, takes place, it takes place where, at the resurrection of Jesus. And verse 17, Jesus has just spoken to Mary. He called her name. He said, Mary, in the tomb where he was standing. And he says, Mary, she turned towards him and cried out, Rabboni. And Jesus says, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my Father and your Father, Mm -hmm. to my God and your God. So I started with this scripture that the Lord inspired this morning when I was reading my prayer time. And the Lord kept saying to me, this is where I'm going with my church. This is where I'm going with my people. This is why Jesus came. He came to return us to the Father, to his Father, to our Father. And uh, you recall Jesus saying, uh, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No man comes to the Father. And here it is again. So, you know what I love about this format we kind of do? Because mm-hmm. we don't really share notes very much of what's going on. And I've talked about this scripture quite a bit over the years. And I just saw that what you brought out, what mm-hmm. you saw today was mm-hmm. here's how I looked at it. Um, and I think both are true at the same time. But he runs into Mary, right? And he says, Don't touch me because he's taking his high priestly role. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to be touched or defiled because he's ascending. Uh, to the mercy seat, sprinkling his blood for all the world, okay? And the way that's described, that that priestly thing is described, because he's going to the Father. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so they're, they're inter- intimately connected, um, him shedding that blood on the, on the real altar in heaven. It was going to his Father. Mm-hmm. It was Dad was there. Papa was there. It was, it was a part of that. And I never saw him... him characterizing it in that way. I kind of characterize it as a priestly role, but he's, he's, he's fixed on the Father. Jesus yes. was fixed on the Father. On the relationship, the intimate relationship that he has mm-hmm. with his Father. And, and there, he's pointing to your Father. I think it's marvelous how mm-hmm. Jesus is he's saying, you now have come to the God who is your father. You are becoming sons and daughters. We are making the way, not only to be forgiven of our sins and reconciled, but making the way for the earthly human beings to return to be the spiritual beings and to be the spiritual children of God, the creator of the universe. That is a tremendous That's thing. awesome. Can I read a verse on that? I'm excited, but go ahead. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 and 18, it says, We are the temple of the living God, and God has said, I will live with them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Wow. Amen. Amen. Well, um, moving along here, I have a few more scriptures, but I wanted to share with you this amazing thing that I've seen God do. Um, when we sit together with Kima, with the, uh, the gentleman, and me with the ladies, uh, I've seen this, um, the woundedness that people carry in their heart from their childhood where they had no daddy, no earthly father, or um, Absentee daddies, you yeah. know, workaholic. Right, um, emotionally not there. Right. Or, or, you know, daddies that were so messed up and so wounded themselves, maybe, you know, they were addicted or alcoholics or um, they, those children and the souls of people are, are missing something. And it, 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 it translates into a sort of a, a void of a need that wasn't met. Yep. It translates into 
um, a, a picture of a deep, dark uh, hole in their hearts and, and just a whole lot of missing what the father, their father, should have mm-hmm. given them, shouldn't have been for them, should have um, told them or spoken over them. Um, so that is the picture that I, I've been seeing and observing, and the Lord has said, pay attention to, pay attention to mm-hmm. what I want to do with these places, not only hurt, but mostly emptiness, void of. And um, that's the good news. The good news is when we find people are ready to look at their dad, feel the wound, feel the hurt, feel the void, and forgive. That's number one, right? Um, Forgiveness is passed on. Um, And the next thing that happens is the person is willing to turn that part of their heart where their daddy didn't fill them up, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't fill them up with identity, belonging, and security. Then when they're ready to to look to God to do something for them, I have seen this, Mm -hmm. that he, the Holy Spirit, right, the presence of God on the earth, will come and completely and absolutely fill that part of their heart, of that little child's heart, that part of your heart. Yes, he will. And he will there give them everything that their earthly daddy should have given them. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. my miracle you go. that I Speak to watch. That one. Lynn. Okay. Yes, I read a, a, a comment here. It's more a comment um, than a question, but um, someone is saying, uh, my daddy was abusive when I was growing up. And yes, there are daddies who are abusive. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've heard many, many stories of abuse, not only emotional abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, Jeez. but also sexual abuse. I've, I've, I've heard that many stories. Um, and the process for every person who goes through something like this is to offer up your heart, all the pain, all the sadness, all the anger, mm-hmm. all of the um, aloneness, maybe, all the unworthiness, guilt, shame, guilt, Always shame. There. You see, there can be an array of emotions down there, but mostly all of the pain, okay, that it produced in your heart to turn it over to the Lord. And there will be a great, great, great exchange. That's the good news. The Holy Spirit will come, He will remove. Um, darkness, he'll bring his light. He will also bring truth where there are lies. Big, big deal. Truth where there are lies. Pulling down the strongholds uh, that you may have come to believe, um, being exposed to abuse. And then the Holy Spirit comes and fills the void and actually becomes the Father Mm -hmm. for you. Yes. How does that sound? Sounds a pretty good deal to me. Um, For those who don't know me, um, my parents divorced and remarried when I was six years old. So kind of growing up, I had two dads because I'd spend my summer with one dad and then my stepfather raised me. And they have both passed on now. And I remember when the last one went, the next day I was um, in a worship service just by myself, just worshiping the Lord. And I was saying to myself, Lord, I don't have a father. There's no earthly father. And I felt this, this void. And then the Spirit of God came and landed on me and said, I'm your father. <laughs> yes. And I had the same reaction. I started laughing and giggling in the, during this worship service, probably disturbing people. But it, for the first time, it hit me mm-hmm. when my earthly fathers were gone, mm-hmm. meaning not here in this earth, because they're both with the Lord, but. It took that far along in my life to really get it, mm-hmm. that God is a father to us. Mm-hmm. Before he was a creator, before he was a redeemer, he was and is a father. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why he created us. He wanted this, to share this love, mm-hmm. this agape love. He wanted to share himself because God is love. Yeah. He wanted to share with someone, and that's why he created 
Adam and Eve had children, basically, and became a father. He wanted that. He wanted us. Before the foundation of the world, his plan was to bring us into the Trinity itself, that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this loving relationship they had, they wanted a vast array, a planet full of Emmanuel raised sons and daughters who would fellowship Mm -hmm. with the Trinity. Amen. I want to read to you another scripture, Malachi 4, 5, and 6. And here it is again. This is a prophecy. Um, And it says, verse 5, See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn. Ah, he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. But I love this prophecy because I do believe it is still being fulfilled. It's being fulfilled as we speak, and I do believe there is a fatherly side of God that a lot of us, a lot of you out there maybe, this is why you're here, you're listening, there's a fatherly heart of God that you do not know. You know him as Jesus, almost like a brother, right? You know maybe the Holy Spirit, but for some of you, it's the father that you do not know how to partake of and receive from because you had a a mean father, because you have an absentee father, because you did not know your father, maybe. So I'm, I'm just so excited about the fact that God wants us as his own children. Not only that, he wants us to become sons and daughters, to be a son and a daughter, is to really, really, really know who the father is and to really trust his heart. Yeah. You know, and if you look at a broad brush stroke, of uh, church history in, in America, it began with an emphasis on Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. The evangelical movement's birthed out of that and, and uh, evangelism, and it was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Then in 1906, Azusa Street hit, went around the planet over the decades, and it became the birth of the Pentecostal movement, the charismatic movement, etc. And then it was all about Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. at least in the circles that we grew up in. And then Today, in the last 25 or 30 plus years, uh, in a large part because of uh, Toronto, the Father's blessing, Yeah. now we're back to the Father, the Father, the Father, where we should be. And so, you know, very important eschatologically, uh, I mean, God's going to wrap this thing up soon because he's revealing the Father now mm-hmm. to the church. And, uh, you know, we, I, I know me, um, when I'm doing sessions, so many times I've seen so many broken families uh, and absentee fathers and men sitting there just in pain. Uh, because we desperately need our our fathers, we really do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and I, it's kind of shifting me now, you know, because I'm always think, seeing Holy Spirit as the one that's doing the inner healing sessions because He's the counselor. But you can't separate the Trinity; they're all one. So it is the Father too, mm-hmm. touching and pulling His sons and daughters back to Himself. Amen. Amen. So it's important to know Him as Father. Listen, I have a story. A few, several years ago, 15, 20, 17 years ago, I was invited uh, by a, um, a Jewish Messianic believer to um, celebrate uh, Shabbat uh, with his family. And um, I remember he had everybody, all his sons, he had four sons, his wife was there, and the sun came down and the candles were lit. And uh, I remember um, Elisheva um, was praying over the uh, the prayer, the Shalom prayer. She was praying. Shabbat prayer, right? And then our friend Chaim got up, and I had never experienced that, never saw, seen that before. He stood up as the father and went around the dining room table and laid hands on his sons. He didn't have a daughter, but... Actually, you know, if he had the daughter, he would have done the same. Mm -hmm. He went to each of them, blessing them with a father's blessing. Actually, he laid hands on me and blessed me Mm. as well. And I had never experienced that. And there was such a presence, such an approval of God, such a a wonderful, loving, um, heavy weight 
love of God um, in that room that I understood that day that God was a father and that he was using earthly fathers to represent him, to bless his children. It was a, a, a beautiful thing. And that was really the heart of his ministry. He would go about preaching and revealing the Father and then laying hands on people and asking the Father to reveal himself and had many, many stories. He stayed with us several days. Mm -hmm. he, he, he really changed our lives in many ways. He yes, was he a did. French prophet. <laughs> he did. Bless him wherever he is in yes. this world, Lord. Um, so again, today we're, we're talking about a Father's blessing, that God is a Father, that Jesus came to lead us back to the Father and uh, that we must come to him as children and then son and daughter of the Father, Heavenly Father. And uh, we have seen, I have seen and experienced this amazing exchange when people are ready to let go and release their earthly father of what they have done to them or not done to them or for them, what, what's what been missing, what, what they wanted from their own father. They wanted, hmm, let's think about this. What did you want from your own father? What is it that he did not give you and that you longed mm -hmm. for, that you really, really desired and you still desire to this day? What is still painful when you think he put his career, he put his bank account, or um, he divorced mom and he went for another woman. Um, what is it that you wanted your dad to give you, to be for you, to say, or to understand about you? You see how that becomes the missing part? And that missing part just creates a sort of a vacuum and a void in your heart. And I'm here to tell you, I have seen the Holy Spirit, as you turn yourself towards him, he will present to you the fatherly heart of God, and he will fill you as you let go, forgive, and ask God to become your father. There's a great exchange that he wants to do. Right, and he gave us a glimpse in the scriptures how he responds when you turn toward him, and that would be the prodigal son. The father saw him from afar off. He ran toward him. He threw his arms around him. He kissed him, and he brought him back in Amen. immediately. That is exactly what I experience in those sessions. <laughs> yeah. He just, he literally runs yes. to them and them to him. He throws his arms around him. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Papa. You have. All right. Any comments out there? Any prayer requests? I just lost this. Terry Lafferty okay. is watching. Hi, Terry. God bless you. Yeah. Miss you. We got to get together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I saw that uh, Jennifer from Germany and Ginny and Wendy and Lois are here. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in and just listening to a little power on inner healing and on the Father's heart today. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. I think you took my scriptures. Oops. Last scripture. That's okay. <laughs> That's the downside of not thinking see, too much. We we prepare separately, so here we go. Um, I just want to bless everybody today with a with a prayer. I'll, I'll be waiting for comments or questions or prayer requests right here. Just a little longer. Got a couple of verses that yeah. are familiar that that, you know, what we see Jesus doing on earth that we read in the scriptures is a, re a revealing of his heart and what he continues to be doing. For example, when he said, um, Philip said to him, show us the Father and that will be enough for us, Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So he is representing the Father. He's only doing what he sees his Father doing. He's only saying what he hears his father saying. And then in, in John, he says, no one has seen the father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the father. Now, that's not true anymore. We can see the father. You, John 14, 6, the, the most famous scripture, mm -hmm. Jesus answered, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father. Again, that's what Jesus is doing. He's continually pointing to the father. 
And he's saying, yes, heaven is out there, but Jesus is the way, the truth, the life to the Father. Amen. Amen. So this, once again, is so very important. I see that everything God does in healing the wounds of people, chipping away and on, on their healing journey, I see where it's heading. And inevitably, when God has done enough of healing over a few sessions, I would say, and when people have received enough of the peace and the healing of God, the truth has replaced those lies, I see people are growing. There's a growth. There's a maturity and a growth, yep. an internal growth, an internal maturity, a stability, a peace that comes upon them and within them. And it doesn't go away. They don't go home and lose it. It is there to stay. But there's one thing that I've noticed is that their arrival, their, their, the goal of God and the arrival is for them to arrive in the heart of the Father that they would know that they belong. They would know they have a place in the Father's heart. And not only would they know it, but they would experience it so much that they would live there every day, Mm -hmm. morning, noon, and night. They would live from the Father's heart. Mm -hmm. Isn't that an amazing concept? Some of you out there are like, ooh, I wish I could. (laughs) <laughs> I could experience that. You mm. can. <laughs> and you can. We're telling you it's happened. Yeah, yeah, in front yeah. of my eyes, in front of me, and people come back to tell me, I've been transformed. It's a conversion into the love of God. Mm. It's a confer- and conversion right. into His Conversion his into Father's love. And actually, that's what breaks the power of sin and temptation in your life. Mm. That What she just described is this intimate relationship with Father, fulfilling all your Father needs in your heart. And the fellowship becomes so good, anything that would risk even interrupting it for a moment has no allure, has no taste when we've built that kind of relationship with the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) You are welcome out there. Um, Just a little more. Hang in there. We're almost done. We just want to wrap this up, but just I really wanted to make this point today. I'm so intense about this. I'm really intense about this. I really believe God wants to reveal himself to you as Father. And he wants you to live in his heart. Isn't that an amazing thing? Um, One last scripture. Romans 8 and verse 15. Let's see, where am I here? I brought my big 30-year-old Bible. (laughs) (laughs) Almost brought mine today. I don't travel with it much, but um, let's see. Right here, verse 15, a little before that. Mm. Uh, Let's see. Right here, verse 14. Here we go. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him, that spirit, him, we cry, Abba. Father, and the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Can you hear that? Can you hear this? God is calling you to not only be a child of God, but to become a daughter, a son of God by the spirit of sonship, the scripture says in Romans 14, 15, and 16, I just read. We have had um, many, we've heard messages on the orphan spirit, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Jack Frost. Jack Frost was, that was his message, his life's message. Um, And I've I've heard many times people say, yes, that's because we we need to 
uh, exchange that spirit, an offering spirit for the, the, the spirit mm-hmm. of sonship. sonship. Um, and I have seen it. I've seen it completely done. It's not just a concept. It's a reality. It can be yes. a reality in your heart. And that's how we go from being just a child, believing in God, mm-hmm. to a son or a daughter led Maturity. by the Spirit. Yes. Because you have a father, there's an inheritance waiting. And inheritance are not given to the, to the children when they're infants, when they grow up and become sons and daughters. Then the inheritance, the kingdom itself, is, mm-hmm. is given by the father. Wow. And if you didn't have a father, you wouldn't have a kingdom. That's true. It's <laughs> very true. So this is the good news one more time, and then I'll pray for you if there's no... There you go, I see. Lois, is Jesus' prayer to his father, John 17, is powerful. Yes. The love of his Amen. people. Very good. Anything else? Very good. Lynn, Lynn Dubois, contact me. Go private message. Contact me. We'll talk, you and I, okay? We'll talk and maybe we'll pray together if you want. So I see your comment right here. Mm-hmm. Um, you're encouraged to contact us either through the website, www.reviveusnow.com. Uh, we, you can see our classes. Uh, inner healing and deliverance classes here at Revive Church, or you can contact us and we do meet with people face-to-face or through video calls as well. Um, and we we will pray with yes, you. Yes, and our new class starts April 11th. Yes. It is a, uh, an introduction and all the way up to a, a training mm-hmm. in this ministry. Amen. Amen, amen. So let me just pray right here. Unless you have something else to add. No, I had a theological end, but I like this end better. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we could read read that one in, in closing, really. Go ahead and read it. Um, I just picked this verse to show the supremacy of the Father, uh, how central he is in Jesus' mind and the Holy Spirit's mind and, and in the Scriptures. First Corinthians fifteen twenty through 28 says, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, but each in turn. Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Now watch this. Then the end will come when he, Jesus, hands over the kingdom to God the Father. After he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power, he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For, quote, he has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that it does not include God the Father, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him, the Father, wow. who put everything under him, <clears throat> so that God may be all in all. This is all about Jesus, what Jesus has done, culminating in a kingdom and everything given back to the Father. Wow. Wow. Wow, I, I sensed that. I felt it. I hope you felt it. The importance of knowing God as Father. Yes, we come to Him through Jesus Christ. He leads us to a Father. And that is an important, important part Huge. in your life. It's your whole life journey. Where are you going? Where are you going? Who are you and where are you going? You are a child of God, recognizing that God is your Father. Yes, you have a destiny because you have a father. Yeah, and I would say that in French. Vous êtes les enfants de Dieu. Il faut reconnaître que vous êtes un enfant de Dieu et que votre père est le père qui a créé ce monde. Vous, a, vous appartenez à un père céleste. Nous appartenons à un père céleste. Et si vous m'écoutez, c'est parce que le père veut vous rencontrer et veut vous démontrer son amour. I just felt like doing that in French for amen. somebody out there. So. Good for you. Amen. Follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> amen. That's for sure. My prayer is right now that, that our voices would just be translating the heart of God for you and that you would have received something, maybe an answer to your questions in that God is just really crashing upon your heart as only he can do 
Oh, yeah. In love and tenderness and gentleness as a father, that he's holding you, that he's making this presence known to you, maybe embracing you, maybe smiling over you, and that you would feel his presence today, that your heart would be right now opening up to him as your father Mm -hmm. and receiving him as the daddy, the heavenly daddy, the Abba, the father that you want, le papa, that you want, that you've always wanted. I pray that his spirit would bless you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye.